Hello guys, welcome back. This is the third video in the productivity series. I have already created the two videos because why I am creating this video is because in, in normal working situations, what you need is a good looking terminal, right? Because you are spending most of the time in the terminal. We have already done that. And the next one is you need to manage multiple versions of Python and then also create the virtual environment. Once that is done, what is the next step? The next step is to have a good looking code editor and my recommendation is using visual studio code because as you can see here it supports many languages and let's say that it is one of the best code editor right now which i have actually tried in this video i'm going to show you the minimal extensions that you need to install to get you started for data science related projects meaning that i will be mainly focusing on python language Let's get started. Okay, this is Visual Studio Code website. I have already downloaded as it is says here, thanks for downloading VS Code for Mac. But if you just go to the main page here, you can download the one that is best for your machine. And as you can see here, there are many things why we should use VS Code or why you could use VS Code. Let's not say we should, but we could, right? There are so many extensions in, in VS Code, many features, but in order to get started, we don't need that much of the things. In this video, as I said you before also, I will show you the minimal things that you need to do that you can work confidently, right? First thing first, let me open VS Code. I have already downloaded. So I will just run here Visual Studio Code. And now here is the Visual Studio Code. This is the first UI it is shown here, right? The first thing I, I, will, show, I will break the video into maybe three, four pieces parts let's say in that way first i will show you how to open let's say a folder right i will show you three different steps you can choose the one that best fits uh, fits you one thing is if you go to this explorer here is the open folder you can click this one and here from the folders in your laptop or desktop whatever you're using let's say that i want to open this langchain falcon I will open this and now I have all the things as I trust. I have all the things here. That is one step of opening it. Next step is, let's say that here I want to create another thing. How to open it easily. It's not showing now in the UI because I have selected the certain part of the screen. But if you go to the VS Code and on the top there is the file. And it says there, save workspace as. Right? If you click on that, it will just show you okay save as this and where you can just provide the folder and we want to uh, save this inside this folder i will say save when you do this as you can see here there is this lang chain falcon chain lit and it is showing the workspace whatever let's say um, uh, settings you want to do for this particular project can be set here that is one thing of this workspace and the next thing is let me open a uh, folder right i will go to my finder here is the langchain falcon chain lead if i go inside this and now let's say that i want to open this in vs code and we had created this workspace right if i click the workspace the whole project is going to be open in the vs code that is second way of doing it and this might even seem, let's say, I don't want to go in this direction. I want to open from terminal itself. What you can do, command shift P or in Windows control shift P. And as you can see here, there is this cell command install code command in path. If it's not shown here, because this is the recently used, but for you, you need to type cell. And here you will see this install code. Just click this one. It says code will now prompt this. It says OK. We need to provide the password here. Just provide your your Mac password. I will provide the password. And now it says it's uh, successfully installed. OK. And now I will close the VS Code. I will go to the terminal. I will run code and dot. Meaning that I want to open this in the VS Code. Dot means the this folder, right? This path, let's say. And if I run code dot, yeah. Now there is VS Code open with that particular uh, folder right so yeah there are three different things but i guess for me at least i use the last one which is quite easier you, you just navigate to some folder and then just run code dot and it opens in the in in the vs code now what are the different extensions that you want right as i said that this is going to be focused mainly with python things you need to go to this extension and in the top 
it will be already shown some popular things here and there is this python right but what i want to do is let me source again python but i want to install the whole pack if you see here python extension pack and there are how many there are seven different extensions as you can see here there is django there is auto doc strings which generates the doc strings by itself and all the different things i will say install all different things will be installed i just want uh, to just say that okay we just go through this and use which you want but i think this python indeed is better and this auto doc string is also better if you want to write better code and something like this you can go ahead and try but i'm just showing you what are the extensions that you might need if you want to know how this works for example if i go to this file and let's say that i go here i go here and i will run the i will create a function okay dev test and i will say a comma b right and i will run here and then maybe i will go here and say return okay i will just say here return a plus b right but i need to now let's say that create a doc string for this i will just run these three things it says generate doc string i can click this and as you can see here it creates the doc strings now you can edit this there is arguments there is returns and so on this is and the simple function that i'm showing you here but this is really helpful when you have let's say the function which takes multiple arguments or parameters and you need to document it really well so that is really good and the next extension that i want to install is jupyter because if you work in data science you need to do exploratory data analysis and jupyter notebook is best for that right i will just run here jupyter and here you can see this is the jupyter and which one to install you can see there are four four meaning that there are four different extensions inside it here is jupyter key map jupyter notebook renderers jupyter cell tags and there is this jupyter slide i'm not going to go through each of this but if you just install this that's 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 all we don't need to go into much of the details here there is two uh, extensions first i will show you all the extensions and i will show you one really good trick which will save you lots of time in coding later on and the third extension which i really recommend you is the docker because nowadays if you see many projects they use docker right if you have docker extension installed it makes it easy to create manage and debug containerized applications right if i install this that's all I, i'm not going to go through the docker right now in the future i might create a video about docker also because that is most essential tool that you need to learn these days right now I, we have the docker and one more thing i want to show you is uh, one extension there is one extension let's say that uh, you want to share some snippet of code with your friends how will you do that you need to copy and then paste somewhere and do different things but i recommend you to uh, install this code snap what does this do is as the name says is it snaps the code right take the beautiful snapshots of your code i use this frequently because how it works is for example now let me go to the file let me go to this line say let me say that i want to send this to my friend uh, as a snippet or you want to post in your social media or somewhere else right and you just copy this right and right click and if you go down here it says code snap you can just click this yeah there is the good looking code being snapped and you can just copy and then just paste somewhere that's how it works this is that simple as you can see here i hope now you get the idea you have seen this kind of snippets and you have think okay how did they do this kind of things but this is that simple things to just take the snap of your code right yeah that is the main essential extensions i want to show you there are many others if you want to work with aws then just just a quick quick tip for you that is this aws tool kit which has which is a really really good extension this is the amazon q code whisperer and many other things here i you can you can download this also i i, I don't want to go through all the because there are thousands of extensions and you might need the extensions based on your use cases but the the next one as i'm as i'm because I, there are so many extensions and i want to give you the most essential ones but similar 
to code snip which is really good i just want to also show you this git lens because git is already there but the git lens is supercharged git with vs code right visualize code authorship at a glance via git blame how it works is let me install this first then it will i will, I will show you now this is installed you can just go through the documentation here already but if i go to the file again if i go to the link chain if i go up and if i just go here it says 2000 six months ago because this this code has written six months ago update the code as the link chain factory meaning that you let's say that this is just you writing the code it's not necessary when you write the code might be but let's say that there are many uh, contributors in a project and you want to know who contributed when right this is really good in that scenario and yeah i hope now i don't want to go in many extensions but i hope now you get the overall idea and when you install the extensions it will appear on the left side here here git lens uh, inspect git lens docker and things right yeah that's all about the extensions but one thing now what i want to show you is let's say that we want to have the jupyter notebook and vs code by the way already has the notebook here let's say that i want to run something similar to what it is mentioned here meaning that i want to have the interactive way but you might argue in this one but having the jupyter notebook and and making that in the production code is difficult because you need to have a good pythonic way of developing things what if we configure the vs code in such a way that we have this normal uh, python uh, code but we can run this interactively meaning that for example now if i want to run this python file i need to go to the terminal and then uh, run uh, python3 main dot or, or the name of the file and it will run the code what if you just want to run this first line of uh, line of code interactively similar to the jupyter notebook i hope now you get the idea what i'm saying here to achieve that what you can do is go to these settings go to this again settings and now you can this is the settings page here right what you can go here is run jupyter and then this colon and send it says here jupyter interactive window just select this one that's all and now if i go back to this line chain factory let me close this to make it bigger or maybe let me increase the font here and let me make this a little bit bigger let's say that i want to just run this it will not run because i haven't uh, installed line chain but just to show you if i run shift internal yeah it is now showing here no module name lang chain but now you can see that it is opening a interactive window if you run this for the first time it might install ipy kernel and all the different things but you get the idea now let's say that i want to run this function right i can just copy this right yeah shift enter and it's there and let's say that now i will say a is equals to five b equals this is just a variable i'm giving i just want to run this line of code let's say i will do shift enter yeah a is equals to five and now let's say that you have long piece of code and you just want to print the variable a right what you can do is just go and highlight a shift enter and yeah that is the value of a it seems that a is five b is five there is this function is test is just a small function but imagine that you have multiple lines of code and you have different functions and you need to compare one uh, variable with another variable and one in, in when you do the eda kind of things exploratory data analysis this is really really helpful and you will be seeing this kind of approach in my future videos also I hope now you get the idea how to have the python code into the jupyter notebook style interactive way the good part of this is now let's say you want to make a package of this code or something like that. it's quite easy now because you know the things work as you want it to work right that is that is the thing and one last thing by the way you might face one minor issue now if i go here and open the terminal on the top uh, i will open a new terminal right and this is the issue that many have asked online also because if you have followed my previous video 
in the terminal my terminal looks quite good here and the font that i have used here is meslo lgs nf right and it is reflected here but it is not reflected in the vs code because the terminal in vs code mimics your 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 locally installed terminal right but then there is no font uh, so you need to specifically uh, tell VS Code use this font because by default it uses the normal font, right? What you need to do is I will just copy one line of let not code but configuration here. What you need to do is go to this settings, go to the settings again, and now this is the UI that you are seeing here. But instead of modifying here, what I recommend you to do is go to this open settings JSON, and here we just have two, right? I will go here comma and then i will paste this terminal dot integrated font family meslo lgs nf this is the one that is being installed when you have this p10k configured the, the power level 10k theme in item when you have configured the omijs now i will save this just see here on the terminal and when i before i save it it is shown here some random problems here right it is not recognizing the font if I just save this one, so yeah, now you can see it recognized that it is Git and other things. And now it is mimicking the same as uh, our item terminal. Yeah, I think this is the minimal things that you need to set up your VS Code. Now, let's say you have, you have a good looking terminal. You know how to have multiple versions of Python and how to create the virtual environment. You have configured your VS Code in such a way that you can work confidently with Python projects, LLM projects, data science projects, whatever you want to do. And other extensions you need to add as you grow, right? Don't don't dump all the extensions in a go because then you don't know which extension is doing what, right? And, and, then, and then also uh, there are different packages things now that I will maybe explain in, in later videos or when I create the videos, you will see what kind of uh, packages I will be using. But there are some of the packages that you need to follow so that your life will be good, let's say productive in a way, right? I hope now you get uh, overall setup ready. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.